we can come back to it as it's okay. Thank you so much, Ma. <laughs> Thank you for that, the ones you have said already. So while you were speaking, Ma, um, you were able to touch on um, one of the questions, but I want you to buttress more on it, um, which is the fact that you explained that for some women, they play the role of the wife too excessively or the role of the mother too excessively. Mm -hmm. We should know how to juggle both the role of a mother, a wife, and um, yeah, the the woman would generally. We should know how to juggle everything together in such a way that um, one will not, you know, outweigh the other. So um, the question is, especially for a woman that is a career woman, how easy is it for her to juggle between? Um, these two effectively, um, considering the fact that she has the role to play to her husband and even to her children, and she also has a role to play to her employer. So how does she achieve this without one um, clashing with the other? Okay. Now, it's not a straight line because there will be days, there will be days that they will clash. That's his reality. Okay? It's not a straight line. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing is, we should go back a bit and invest a lot in teaching our girls how to choose their husband. That is really important because, you know, the ingredients you bring together to cook a pot of soup, to a large extent, will determine the result you will get. Mm -hmm. If you want to cook, um, what do they call it? Let's say if you eat amala and you want to cook the begiri, you know that the you know that the major substance of that is beans, and then you have red oil and, and then pepper and all of that. Mm -hmm. If instead of red oil you mm -hmm. decide to use vegetable oil, you already know you're going to get a different mm -hmm. result. The beans is there, you have all yeah. the salt and everything, but Mm -hmm. if the if instead of red oil you use vegetable oil you are going to end up with a different result instead of salt if you use sugar you will get a different result <laughs> so it's really about us going you know for many decades mm -hmm. for many generations before us the life of women it was simpler it was easier it was a different time and a different season. The mindset mm. of that generation defined the role of a woman in a narrow way. Her role was defined largely to serve her husband mm. and her children and sure. the family. Not because that's how God designed it. And why do I know that? Yeah. Open your Bible. From as far back as Bible times, there were mm. women that God gave the responsibility of leadership. As far back as Bible time, you have like the Psalm 31 woman. She was oh, an girl, yeah. she was an entrepreneur, mm. you know, she mm. was involved in multiple business, she was a leader in the community, she built yeah. real estate, she did multiple things. You had Deborah, who was a judge. Judge whole of Israel, Israel. you know, you, so you, you look at history, he doesn't mm. match where mm. we were or where we still are in many communities across the world. Sure. Men have redefined what God intended for the role mm. of women. And we're going back to the times where the talents and the gifts that God has given to women is emerging as gifts and talents that have been applied. You know? So we need to re reset the mind of mm. the community and the women mm. themselves. And mm. we as mothers have to help our daughters. You, you should wonder why many young marriages in this last decade don't last at all. Mm. Three months, six months, 
one year, three yeah. years, five years, marriages are falling apart. Why? Yeah. The principles under which we're trying to define marriage and the time and the season that we're in, they do not match. The girls are going to school. They have ambitions. They have Ambition. aspirations. They have vision. They mm. know their talents and their skills. They know mm. they can earn money and be contributors to their household. Mm. They know they can be leaders of nations. Mm. They know they can be CEOs of organizations. They know they mm. can serve on multiple boards. They know mm. they can be the doctor, the surgeon. They can play any role they choose to. Mm. They know that. And yet, we have not reset the mind of both the women and the community. The men. Yes, both the women, the men, and the community mm. at large mm. to say to the girl, look, if you want your call to work, you have a responsibility not to just get carried away with the societal or cultural perspective of you getting married. It's a good thing to be married and to mm. desire it. But you have to be more strategic for the life that you know you have and the life that you know you want to live. And what does that mean? It means if I'm an ambitious a driven woman who wants to fulfill myself, to fulfill mm. my gifts and to fulfill my calling, mm. I have a responsibility to ensure that the guy that I choose to be my husband is not mm. just about the fact that he's tall, he's handsome, he, ha he comes from a certain kind of family or the right family, because I don't even mm. know what, what that means. But there are many mm. things that is not mm. just about that. But that it's about the character of the man, mm. it's about the substance of the man, it's about the understanding of the man, it's about mm. the maturity of the man and the acceptance of who I am as a person, whoever that woman is, mm. and his ability to work with who I am for me to be the best of myself. And mm. it's only when I'm the best of myself I will be better as a helper because sure. if the Bible says that your wife is your helper, mm. she can only, the quality of help you can get from her is mm. the quality of the woman that she is. Sure. And so it is enlightened self-interest mm. for a man who has wisdom to allow the gifts and the talents of his wife to be maximized because she can serve him better in that place. And for her to understand the unit of marriage, the togetherness, the partnership, and the mm. team. Team works best when we both understand our combined vision and yet understand our individual vision. And mm. we work out how our individual vision works mm. together for our combined vision. So mm. we need to do a lot of work to get the girls to think differently about that mm. process of deciding who to marry. Mm. And now, once you have done that, it becomes a lot easier. Not necessarily that it becomes easy. It becomes mm. easier if you are two people with full understanding and respect for each of your own ambition, each of your own goals, and if mm. your success and the success of your husband serves the success of your family, mm. which means you are both bringing value to the table. Mm. So you're working to protect each other's value because it serves your family. You know? So it, it's in that sense, you will find that when the woman needs to worry about uh, my role as a wife and my role as a mother, mm. it's easier because you have the support. You're working as a team. There are days, you know, I remember when my youngest son, and my kids are like two generations. You know, my youngest son is seven years and a few months older than my second. You know, and at that stage of my life, I was really busy. So in the morning, I would be involved in getting my son ready for school. He wouldn't even let his nanny get him 
ready. ready. So I could have to bathe him, dress him up, you know, sit down with him at the table to have breakfast, pray with him, take him out to the car till he goes off to school. But in the afternoon, I can rarely be around to pick him from school. Mm -hmm. So that's something that my husband took over. His own driver is the one that picks my son mm. from school. And mm. many times, if my husband is in the car because he's gone for a meeting or the other, he goes to the class to pick his son. And so anybody that doesn't have an understanding mm. might not see me in the school in the afternoon as often as they probably see some other mothers and could conclude that you're not involved in your son's life mm. you know but that's their problem not mine mm. you know which is why you have to have an understanding of your own life mm. and as in your partnership you must have an understanding and respect for one another mm. and one another's life so that you are working as a team to support each other mm. and it, it just makes life a lot easier then you have a better partnership you know, mm. there, there, there's things will work that's just the reality mm. you can get all the help and everything and that makes it a lot easier and you should get all mm. the help that you can mm. set up the systems that you can but mm. even with all of that there are days things just won't come together but it mm. won't matter because well that is life you know god never mm. told us that everything would be a straight line he said in the world we will see trouble so there would be challenges even in the pursuit of being a mother and a wife but mm. even someone without a husband and a child can have challenges in other ways yeah. so it's really about us learning to live the life we have been given the best way that we can and mm. achieve the goals and the greatness that we should even as we pursue our journey but the spouse matters in mm. terms of how we're able to do that which is why i spent so much time on going back mm. to start teaching our girls the fundamentals of how to choose mm. the man they marry because mm. it's important and mm. spend time teaching our, our men or our boys what it is to be a husband in 21st century and not to look at the husbands of old some of their fathers and the kind of relationship their fathers and their mothers had because the times are the different is changing it's changing and you need to adjust with it and mm. see if you do want to get married you are going to marry a girl from this generation a girl whose exposure understanding ambition and drive is different does that mean that your marriage cannot work no there were marriages that broke up even in our own generation Sure. so it's really about how if you have an understanding of each other and you cannot have a full understanding we all we come as two strangers with some knowledge of each other to become one it's when you become one that the journey really starts because that's when you start discovering more and more about each other but if you are committed to the goal then you will work it out with each other as you go along in order to achieve uh the greatness of each one of you and the greatness mm. of your unit, your team. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Ma, for that. So while you were speaking, Ma, you mentioned the fact that we need to help our girls or teach them how to understand the process of choosing um, the husband they are going to marry. And um, I noticed that some um, people also believe that we need to also teach the men or reorientate them about what it takes to truly be a husband because um of late we find out that we have some young men who got married just because they want to have someone they can easily um have sex with and have kids with and not necessarily because they want to play that role of a husband or a father they leave all the duties to the woman to do so some people believe that we need to also pay attention to our male children. We need to teach them how to be responsible um, adults or responsible men, how to also assist the woman in carrying out uh, maybe our roles or our chores. Because 
as a matter of fact, there are still some men till today that believe that, oh, house chores is mainly for the women. They don't need to lift a finger in the house to do anything. So, so many wrong mindset that is affecting marriage. I just want you to share um, a little light on that, on how we can help to reorientate the men in these areas. I, I think the responsibility is for all of us as mothers, you know. If you have boys and you're raising them, it, just reverse it. If you had a girl, what kind of husband would you like for her? What would you like her husband to know? What would you like her husband to do? If that is the situation, then start teaching your boys to be that man that you would want your daughter to marry. Mm -hmm. That's the responsibility that we have. You know, my life series project that I've been doing for the past two years now, Mm. I have men only sessions as well as women only sessions. Mm. And then in December, I usually have a combined session. Section. It's because of these same things that we're talking about. And part of what I do there is to find great men who are living a balanced life as successful men in outstanding careers to share their story and their relationship with their husband. So you can model the right examples for the guys to learn from and ask questions extensively. And I'm, I know that it's working, you mm. know. So we still have a long mm. way to go. Mm. But it's the responsibility of all of us as women is what we teach our boys that they mm. will do when they get married. True. And I hope to God that we will all do a good job in a way that the daughters that come home to us as wives of our children will come mm. back to us to say thank you. Because, mm. frankly, if you are a working mother who has had to juggle and balance things in raising your boys, your son has only seen a woman working. And he has seen the responsibility and the pain and the strain on his mother where she didn't mm. get the right support from the father. It would just be an anomaly for that boy to marry and expect to do the same thing to his own wife and not have taken learnings from his mother's life in order to support his wife. The sad part sometimes is, is us as women who are mothers who actually, you know, make the matters worse mm. and continue to perpetuate those things because the things we hated as women when we were wives, we want those things to be done to our daughter-in-laws. Mm. You know, it, it's a strange thing that we don't take the learnings of our own lives and apply mm. it in an equitable manner to what we're asking for from the lives uh, of others. So uh, it's a, I think it's a responsibility for all of us. We still have a long way to go, mm -hmm. but... You, to change culture and change a society, mm. it takes generations. It takes decades. But mm. there must be a starting point. The journey of a thousand years starts with the first step. Mm. And we need to take those steps if we want a sustainable society. And mm. we need to continue to build on it so that mm. you know many more women can have a successful home. Mm thank you ma for that yeah. okay so um i think we have two more questions so there is this one about um some men believing that their wife should not work at all so we've had um cases of husbands that won't allow the woman to work even when the woman is trying to do um maybe a vocational uh, to acquire a vocational skill he won't allow her to do that. He just believed that a wife should be like a piece of furniture that should sit in the house, just um, giving back to children and raising the kids. He doesn't believe that a woman should go out there or should have any work that she does just to earn a living. And we've even had a case of a husband who seized his wife's um, BSc certificate just to ensure that she would not 
go out there to work or look for what he had to see um the certificate um ma i want you to shed a little light on that what do you think because we all know what the economy is saying now is it advisable for um wives to just sit down not doing anything considering the fact that these men cannot fully provide for all our needs and the needs of our family members you know when we i get asked this kind of questions I can only shake my head for the simple reason that, look, it's part of why it's important to teach our children, our daughters, how to choose mm. husbands. Whether it's the last question or this question, mm. a woman has a choice. She's not a slave or a piece of furniture that is sold to a man. In the process of dating the man, you must already have a sense of his habits, his thinking, and his ways. If you know you're a woman that wants a man that would support and encourage you, from the conversation of that man, you will already know if he's not. Mm. If you know you, you, you're a woman who has an ambition and a drive and you want to make something of your life, mm. from your conversation with that man, you will already know if he's a man that supports a woman working, a woman having business or anything, mm -hmm. and you can already make a decision. You know, this situation where women think they're smart and mm -hmm. that I will marry him, but I will change him. Mm -hmm. They are not God. Mm -hmm. You can't, you, like they say, you can take a horse to the river. You cannot force the horse to drink water. Mm -hmm. The process the problem starts from the who you marry. Now, mm. let's be honest. The man has a right to want what he wants. That's his problem. Mm. He can want a wife that will not work. There are women that don't want to work. Mm. So true. frankly, he will find one that is happy mm. to be a kept woman. The problem is the woman who does not want to be a kept seat at home woman who then agrees to marry a man who wants a woman that will do exactly that mm -hmm. so it's the woman's problem mm -hmm. it's not the man's problem because whatever that man wants for his own selfish reasons mm -hmm. he has a right to it and he can find the right woman for that but you as a woman as well Mm -hmm. you have a right to what you want yes. what you want to be the life you want to live and mm -hmm. how you want to express your life and you have a responsibility to protect and defend that mm -hmm. by choosing the right spouse who has the capacity to work with you to mm -hmm. be who you want to be mm -hmm. if you know that your core wants to work wants to build a career, wants to do whatever, wants to achieve greatness, wants to achieve great things. Don't marry a guy who is looking for a housewife. You cannot marry him and then complain about who he is. You know, the guy who will seize your certificate, he didn't just start after he married you. His language, his value system, his the way he is, you would already know. No. So this addiction to you want to get married, you want to get married, you overlook critical components of your life. Mm. And when you get into it, you sign a contract. You are already mm. in the contract. And then mm. you want to change the terms of the contract midway. That's a problem that we as women need to pay attention to. Mm. See, it's better to marry at 30, marry at 40, marry at 35, live till 70, 75, 80, but live satisfactorily, exactly. live joyfully, mm. be, know, have, know that you have lived the life that you really want, than to be married at 25 and be miserable for 50 years. Mm. Or at the end of the day, you're forced to divorce by 30 because it's just not working for mm. you. Mm. And the thing about it for the men as well is foolishness. In this mm. time and season, season. Li life happens. Mm. 
Mm. Husbands die. True, man. Businesses fail. Mm. Men lose jobs. Mm. Accidents happen. <laughs> Things happen that can make an economically viable man who can provide mm. for his family alone run into a crisis that takes him out of his game. True, man. If he has uncuffed his helper, mm. he cannot get any help. Mm. True. Because he had made his wife redundant mm. and has not allowed her to be productive. Mm. Even if he builds the greatest business and then dies suddenly, mm. if his wife has not been empowered to understand the business, to have the capacity to take over, yeah. to negotiate, or to do whatever, strangers mm. will take the business from them. True. I know many people that have died that had mm. money but the money mm. is sitting with other people and their wife didn't know much, didn't mm. know anything about this. And the wife and the children suffer because mm. others, people are not so trustworthy. They will run mm. away with these things. And they, they are real life things that have happened. I mean, if you live in Nigeria, you live in Lagos, there are many stories. You know what can happen. So if in 2021, a man is still looking for a wife who is a piece of furniture, mm. Good for him. Mm. If there's a woman who still wants to be a man's piece of furniture, furniture. Good for her. Mm. but if you're a woman who wants to be somebody else, then don't put yourself in a situation that is not going to work for you. Mm. You might not have everything on day one. So you marry a guy that you start together struggling. Mm. But if you're able to express yourself, you can both make it. You can make your life together. Mm. You can make money, you can make money. You combine together, you can look. There, there are real life stories. I know women who left hus young husbands who didn't seem to be able to give them that much to follow older people that they thought would give them the world, mm. and then that person they left became completely very successful, and where they went to they were not reckoned with because they're not the primary wife in that situation. Mm. And as far as I'm concerned, they lost out in many ways. Mm. Don't chase pottage mm. and, you know, leave your legacy and your future and your gifts at the table. Mm. Mm. Don't be at Esau and you know, yeah. be called to be a Jacob. It's really mm. what I'm trying to say with that. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. So um, the last one um, is on commitment in marriage. Commitment yes. in marriage. So some some people see marriage as mm, uh, well. Uh, it's, if it's not working, if it's not working, let's just go our separate ways. If it's not working, um, but they fail to understand that they also have a part to play in making it work or to be committed um as we've had cases of men who are even married you know still going after other women and things like that and we have cases of women too who are married even with kids and still going after other men so i want you to speak on that commitment aspect of marriage for for people to understand that this is a uh this is more of a long-term commitment to work with each other rather than saying it as oh if it's not okay or if it doesn't go down well with me i can easily opt out i think we should start from the fact that we all get married for different reasons mm -hmm. you know and the intention of each person will play out in the way they approach the relationship if a woman gets married largely to have children, then she doesn't really care about the relationship. She just wants a father for her children. Mm -hmm. If a woman gets married to stop her aunties and her uncles from asking her, when are you bringing the husband home? And those are the things we do as a society that we use to create problems. We should, we should stop asking people. If they haven't brought one home, they haven't brought the person home. Treat them as a human because their life is not defined by who they marry or if they marry. Yeah, yeah. They, they as the person is far more important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, respecting that their person and not make 
not making people feel something is wrong with them because they're not married is a thing that the whole society needs to rise up to mm. you know because some of that is why women allow themselves to be pressured to make decisions even when they know without a doubt that this is not the right person mm. for them now the basis for which you go into marriage sometimes will affect your ability to commit in, in the relationship you know and it also depends on your character as a person mm. and your understanding of covenant marriage is a covenant it's a covenant is a contract we all say this thing either at the marriage registry or in court till death do us part mm. now what it says to us is we have no respect for the contract we have no respect for the law. Our words were just said for the fancy. Because if indeed we do have respect for the words that we say mm. and the commitment before God, then we will go the extra mile in order to preserve that contract and to make it work. Now, let me put a caveat. Going the extra mile does not include physical abuse of a woman. If a man is beating you, I will tell a woman to leave. Why? Because we've seen too many women killed by abusing husbands. So all this thing that families tell a girl, you cannot leave the place no matter what. Just stay there until you get killed. No, there are many things you can endure. There are many things you can work at. Mm -hmm. And marriage has that as a constant part of it because you are two different people. people. You know, they say iron sharpens iron, but the mm -hmm. process of iron sharpening iron is rough. You know, mm -hmm. there's pain involved because you will see sparks of iron chipping off. So you are refining one another. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's pain, sometimes there's joy, but overall, you will know that there's purpose and there's satisfaction mm -hmm. in this commitment. So that one is there. But where you know without a doubt that you have the case of a man who is totally uncommitted to the contract, totally uncommitted to the covenant, and on top of that is an abuser of his wife. That's a different scenario. Mm. You know, and as families, we have to decide what is our priority appearing good in the society impressing society or protecting our own because when the chips are down I, if i had a daughter i would protect the life of my daughter against a very abusive relationship i mean i know of a couple the girl works the guy hardly does anything is running up and down you know acting like a big boy they have four children but apart from the fact that she's paying all the bills, mm. he beats her red and blue. Mm. You know, she cannot focus at work, yet no. she's the primary breadwinner for the family. They, he has access to her account. Mm. He can take all the money out and spend on his concubines or his mistresses. Mm. And on top of that, he will beat her to nonsense. Where is the marriage? There's no marriage there. The Bible says that if the unbelieving husband wants to go, let him go. <laughs> yes. So when, if your life is at risk and you get to a point where you know that before you have a heart attack, mm. you lose your job, and then you destroy the children mm. because you are shaping their mindset by the kind of True. environment, corrosive environment that you have. Mm. Sometimes it is in the interest of the woman and the children to separate from that toxic environment mm. so that the children can have a chance. She might not divorce him, but she might just understand that, look, I need a safer space for me and for my children. And whilst they try and work things out, if it's workable. But where we have a near impossible situation 
and one party has totally breached the contract is non-committed to the terms of the contract we have to be a lot wiser in the context of today there's no christian that would get married seeking to get divorced i hope not because we know that that is not our first place to go nor is it something that god wants for us but i also know that god delights in our prosperity and our peace and our joy and we need to find how things work there are many every marriage has its own you know like i said iron sharpening iron you work together you have your try moments you go through it but you do that because you are committed to the goal mm. it doesn't mean you won't have challenge so that's not what we're talking about at all mm. but there are those places that it is clear that it does not serve the interest or the life of the woman and her children mm. to remain in that toxic environment and that's how many young women have been killed Mm. Because families keep insisting, no, 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 you cannot come back to your father's house. You cannot go and rent a house by yourself. You cannot. Look, <laughs> we have to be objective and look at things yeah, objectively and constructively. Mm. Make an informed decision that protects the parties involved at the end of the day. A wife mm -hmm. gift to a man mm. to do as he wants. If you give him a car, he can crash the car. That's his problem. Mm. If you give him a wristwatch, he can take a hammer and break the wristwatch. That's his problem. But his wife was not given to him as a gift to destroy. <laughs> and there are two adults that came mm. together as one. There isn't the husband, a child, woman, and children. No, no, no. Mm. There are two adults that came together. The Bible says we should submit one to another. <laughs> which means you're equal partners working together. Mm. You're working together, learning from each, each other, sharing knowledge and strengths together. Mm. Because mm. Why, why does it say submit one to another? Mm. It means there's some areas where I have leadership. Where you, notice, where you recognize that, submit to my knowledge and my skills in that space. Sure. There are some areas where you have the strength and it is clear. I mm. should submit to your knowledge and your strength in that space. Mm. Together as a team. Mm. The Bible says the two is one. Mm. Can you be one with something that is not equal or equivalent to you in, in, in any way? Mm. It will be a mismatch. True. Mm. This whole notion that, you know, one and the wife isn't a servant. She's a partner that is meant to complete the man. So it is working together. The biggest wisdom a man can have in marriage is to understand that what his wife becomes is the quality of the help he will get in the day of trouble. Apart from the fact that, you know, the Bible says, love your wife, that your prayers may be answered. So you are doing yourself good service. If you love your wife as Christ loved the church, Mm. So that when you pray, it will not be hindered. If you find couples that are a team, a real team with mutual respect for one another, you find it's easier for them to succeed. Sure. Even when they go through challenging situations, because they have one another mm. and they look up for each other, they can overcome many things. Easily. Easily. It's, mm. it's a lot easier for mm. them. There's no... How do you say the agreement that is most powerful in this world is between a husband and a wife because there's a divine hand in mm. that agreement. So, mm. whenever you have a team of a husband and a wife that work together with one mind, they're mm. unstoppable, they can mm. do amazing things, mm. you know. So, it, 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 I don't know why people will get married only to you can have children without getting married because they are women that are willing to do that for you but if you go the step of wanting to get married you must understand you know there is responsibility involved in it. but the women have the responsibility to protect themselves by ensuring that the man is qualified is capable and has the right mindset character and 
to be mm. the husband that would help them to be the best of who God has called them to. <laughs> we should never give away that position. Sure, ma. Sure, ma. Thank you so much, ma. My You've pleasure. done justice to all the questions. But I, I have um one question for you, ma. So okay. um, you are one of those people I look up to as um, a mentor because I like the way you speak. And um, your words can be very compelling. Each time I listen to you, it's like an armor is being hit. You know, Thank you. <laughs> my mind that mm, you better listen. So mm -hmm. I just want to ask, Ma, mm, what are your daily routine like, or how are you able to become a woman of so many parts, such that you do so many things at the same time, yet is not affecting one or the other. Just to give us a little clear as to what your daily routine is as a mother and as a wife. Man. Okay, well, I'm not much of a person of routine, mm. but if I take my morning, it would likely be that I wake up and mm. uh, I would um, want to I'll pick my phone, check if there's anything urgent. And mm. once I settle that, I put it aside and I would want to pray. Mm. And that starts my day. The rest of my day can work out in different ways, depending on what that day is dedicated to. And because there are multiple parts to my life, each day mm. is so very different. Now, mm. the question that you ask that is key is how do I do so many different things, which I get mm. asked a lot. Mm. You know, one of the things I've realized in life is I'm not the most important person in my life. Okay? I have the assignment and the call of God, but for me to fulfill all that I have been called to, I must be humble enough to lean on people. And leaning on people means... You mustn't have a grandiose idea of yourself or of you being the most important person. Once you settle that, you will treat the people around you as real assets. You will treat them well in a way that you are able to draw value from them. You will understand that every human being in your life that is an extension of your life is giving you a gift of their own life and of their own time, even if you are paying them for it. Mm. Because it's not the salary you pay people that makes them work well for you. It is how you make them feel mm. that makes them willing to go the extra mile for you to help you achieve the things you want to achieve. Mm. So one of the biggest lessons I have learned is to always treat people right and to respect other people and their own gifts. My house help is important to me. <laughs> Why? There are many things I can't do without, I have more than one. My cook is important to me because I'm not in the kitchen cooking. Somebody is helping me to make that role function mm. in my house so that I can do the other things that God has called me to. But I, I played part of that role. I ensure that everything that is required is available. Mm. And that is simply about me ensuring that I get the right list of what is needed or what is uh, non-available at the right time and mm. makes the provision or makes the uh, funds available for that to be procured in order for the house to keep running. Mm. And to ensure that I can sustain keeping staff over time. If my driver isn't treated well, I'm going to get mm. myself stuck in the middle of the bridge one day, abandoned with a car. No, no. This is... So it's not even just your people at the highest level. It's people at every level in your mm. life. Mm. And people that you partner with, that you collaborate with, that you do business with, they're just people that bless your life. The ability to do multiple things is about having the liberty to delegate to others, mm. but to delegate and empower. Mm. Sure. Because you see, there are many people who delegate and hold power. <laughs> if you delegate and you hold power, you are still controlling everything that they're doing. Mm. 
mm. which means they can't make any decisions mm. except you are there. What, what about when you die? Mm. What will happen? Mm. Which is part of why many great businesses have been built in Nigeria over time, but many mm. of them do not exist True. because they died when the owners died. Right. Because the yeah. owners never handed power to anybody else. Mm -hmm. you know, allowed the business to go forward without them. It's about our practices. Mm. So I, I made a decision, I think when I was about 30, going on 31, and I was about to have my second son, that I wanted, I was 31 going on 32, I, I mm. wanted to have a life, mm. have a successful business, but also have a life mm. you know have time for my children and my home and i realized that one of the things i had to do was to ensure that i didn't build my business in a way that it cannot function without me mm. so i sought to try to free myself mm. and that experience made me realize make made me make a decision to say that by the time I'm 50, I was going to be out of driving my business every day. Mm. I think I achieved that at 48. Wow. You know, and if I hadn't already scheduled my life in some way like that, mm. when all the corporate parts of my life on these boards, I'm on that board, which I'm still mm. serving on multiple boards, and then, you know, becoming the chairman of the bank and with all of the time, uh, mm. that consumed that and all of that, it would have been a major task. Mm. And then all the things I've given my life and my time to, like all of my life series projects, my speaking uh, career, which is quite extensive, mm. I would not be able to do all of those other things. I would then just have been tied to my business. Yet mm. those other gifts were in me to use and to apply. Mm -hmm. And my biggest ambition in life is to die empty, <laughs> knowing that every gift and talent that I have has been utilized yeah, yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. Now, I can only do that if I have not tied myself in a way that I cannot be free. Mm -hmm. I can readily take holidays with my family. I take mm -hmm. more than one in a year. They have different, uh, di there are different holidays that represent different parts of my life. What is also because I have deliberately, because mm. we need to live more deliberately and intentionally. Sure, ma. We must decide this is what I want for my life and this is how I want it to work. And then we mm. must work to organize our life for those things to work. Mm. And some of it involves freeing ourselves, having the liberty of mind to give power to others in our life and to handle people around our lives with greater respect and love and concern mm. Mm. so that we're able to do so many other things. And you would find that you would get the gift of people's service and love and support mm. when uh, your attitude draws right. people, respects the gift they give you mm. and does not mishandle it. Mm. Mm. People are key. True. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma. <laughs> We've learned a lot today. Thank you, Ma, for honoring our invitation. Um, we are so blessed to have you today. Thank you so, so much. We are grateful, Ma, for honoring our invitation. We wish you um, all the best in life. And as you Amen. continue to impact the lives of many people out there, I pray that God will continue to bless you and increase Amen. you in strength and wisdom Amen. <laughs> because that is what you are known for always. Amen. Thank you so much, Thank Ma. You, thank you, everyone. Yeah, Bye. thank you. Bye, Ma. <laughs>